I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 everyone. Uh, this is Jonathan, your humble slave. Uh, I am with my partner, Benoit, aka Nostradamus. Ben, are you doing, my friend? Uh, Fine, and you? Yes, yes, yes. Really good, really good, everyone. So, tonight, this is our first episode of uh, um, of a season three, and uh, we have a special guest because uh, uh, many weeks ago we were talking about a special ECW um, edition podcast, and uh, we have none other than uh, the homicidal, genocidal, suicidal Mr. Sabu. Uh, give me just one second, I will share my um, Thank you. yes, Thank sir. You. I got Super Junior on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing, my friend, today? I'm doing a little better today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you to join us. Yes, so um, uh, we know that you are very busy with a lot of things. Uh, we're uh, talking about uh, meet and greet this week and stuff like that. So we go uh, forward with some questions. Uh, how long was your um, seminar uh, for uh, finally becoming a pro wrestler? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Pete. I couldn't hear you that good. Okay, no problem. So, how long uh, was your seminar for finally becoming a pro wrestler? Wanting me to be a pro wrestler? Yeah. I watched my uncle growing up. Yes, exactly. I was like three years old. I watched my uncle on TV. Okay. When I was about three years old on TV, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Like, I, I always did. Ever since I was three years old, I was, I was preparing myself for when I turned 18 to be a wrestler. Okay, and um, initially you trained to uh, become a technical wrestler. Why are you becoming an hardcore wrestler? Um, I, I don't know. It was just natural. Uh, when I became a hardcore wrestler, uh, there was no hardcore wrestlers. They they're, they're called brawlers, like kick and punchers, and my uncle was a hardcore wrestler. But <laughs> I just took it to another level. There was no decision. It just happened. Uh, I, I didn't plan on it. Nobody told me to do it. I just did it, you know. Yeah. And um, what is your inspiration for high flying move? Because uh, as you said, uh, your uncle was a, a technical and uh, more a brawler than a high flying, a high flyer uh, wrestler. Yeah, he, he was a brawler. And, and I was considered more of a brawler at first. Like the dirt sheets, like uh, Wrestling Observer, they rated me like number three in the Bruiser Brawler uh, category. Like the okay, okay. Category there was one. okay. That's so, very, uh, that's very, very, very targeted. Back then, okay. Back then, hardcore wrestling was kicking and punching, not, not flying around, not breaking stuff, you know, not really going crazy. It was, it was, it was very controlled kind of chaos, but it wasn't chaos, it just looked like chaos. <laughs> <laughs> but my uncle, you know, he, 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 he invented it sort of by breaking the rules and getting away with it. And when he was doing it back in the, when he started back in the 50s and 60s, they didn't want him to do that. They only let him do it, nobody else, which was great because they made him very special. Yeah, that's cool. And now they have hardcore shows. They have mm -hmm. hardcore matches on every, on every show. And uh, it can, it's kind of watered down. It's not as good as it used to be. It's not as exciting as it used to be. Okay. Okay. And uh, your first tour, Mr. Sabu, was in uh, Japan for FMW, Frontier Martial Art uh, Wrestling in Japan, of course. Yeah. Can you talk about your experience with uh, bar, 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 barbed wire <laughs> match? Sorry, barbed wire matches. Onita, Ayabusa, fired that matches and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, well, for the, my very first was in Japan in 1991. Okay. 1991. Mm -hmm. uh, they, Onita called my uncle and 
said, do you want to come over and support tag team, Jeremy? My uncle said, sure. I have to bring my nephew. And Onita said, bring anybody you want. He's just going to do the job anyways. And my uncle said, okay, whatever. So we get over there. And before my first match, I, I wrestled like everybody else. You know, regular lock up, headlock, you know, take over, hip toss, regular stuff. Mm-hmm. Kick, you know, only regular stuff. First match stuff. Okay. And my uncle goes, I go, what am I going to do tonight? What do you want me to do? Like, what do you want me to do different? Because the way you do that stuff, you do in the backyard, you think I'm not watching you. Now, I don't know if you know what that means. Me. Uh, I, was, I was doing some crazy stuff, but I thought he wasn't watching me. So he said, now, act like I'm not watching you. Do that stuff now. And I said, okay. So I did, and I got over, and uh, the rest was history. So, so you know, uh, that's where my hardcore style came from, was me playing around in the backyard where my uncle said, stop playing and do it for real in the ring. And uh, I did, and it worked. It was, it was amazing. And how many Marlboro matches uh, do you real- realize in your career, you think? Uh, how many matches I had through my career? Uh, in a barbed wire match. In oh, your career. barbed wire match. I had about, uh, I say 75, but there's only about 35 on record. Oh, uh, shit. Man, I really didn't like doing them. <laughs> uh, my first barbed wire match was in 92. Okay. February 92, I think it was. And uh, I tried real hard, and I got cut up real bad. But, but I thought I was never going to have another one. Or if I was going to have another barbed wire match, it's going to be a long time from now. But I, I did that barbed wire match. And then uh, two months later, I had, I had another barbed wire match. I had two of them. And then a couple months later, I had 16 of them. I go, why did I got 16 barbed wire matches? They go, you love barbed wire. I go, no, I know. I was just working hard at whatever I was faced with. Uh, I don't like yeah. it. I was just trying hard. They, they misread that as me liking it. So they put me in, you know, about 35 to 75 barbed wire matches. Well, there is a rumor. I don't know if it's true or false, but your scars have been stuck with glue. Is it true or not? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> During your first run in ECW from uh, 1993 to uh, 1995, you defeated uh, Chain Douglas in October 1993 for the ECW title. How did you feel when you became the ECW champion at your uh, second match? Uh, it was pretty cool because, uh, yeah, it was my second match. My first match was there against Taz. Yeah. That was my best match of ever, I ever had, I think. Me versus Taz, uh, the very first ECW match in '93. Yes, I'm. Uh, I, I remember that you are uh, strapped on a uh, on a yes, yes. Uh, uh, with uh, a. I, I was wearing. Yeah, I had, I had a lucky match, but I was wearing blue like, pants. That's how I remember it. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, that's my favorite match. That's the most memorable match. But uh, the next one was against Shane Douglas, where I, I beat him real quick for the, the ECW title, which I, I was a little disappointed with because I wanted a longer match. I wanted 35 or 45 minute match. With Shane because I knew he could go, but uh, they had me beat him in like two minutes, and that's what he wanted, so I did that. You know. But yeah. uh, that was cool, it was quite an honor. Okay. Uh, in 1994, uh, Chris Benoit accidentally injured your neck at ECW November to remember. Did you think that your wrestling career was over uh, at this moment? No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't even think the match was over, but it was. I couldn't continue the match because <laughs> I was hurting so I imagine. Uh, Uh, no, it, it didn't fade me that much. They had convinced me to go to the hospital because I didn't want to go. And then when I was at the hospital, they said, you know, you have a, you know, uh, a, a, you know, an actual broken neck. You know, okay. And, and uh, they, we had to take you for a halo. And you're not going nowhere. You're not going to wrestle no more either. I said, okay. So when they left the room, my referee helped me leave. And I just left. Mm-hmm. And I actually had two weeks off. And then I had went to Japan. And I was to Japan wow. for a neck brace at the night wrestling. I, I did a five-week tour of FMW and one week tour of New Japan. Six weeks all together and uh, with a broken neck. Crushing okay, so broken. that's Crushing. why you have a lot of match uh, that that I have in my uh, basement. <laughs> you uh, you wrapping your uh, your head with uh, tape. That's my job. Yeah, your that's job. your yeah. job. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, wow! I first wow. started with my neck. I used to because uh, you know if you got a broken neck and yeah. I'm wrestling with that, I want people to uh, appreciate that I'm wrestling with a broken neck where I can paralyze at any moment. So wow. I wore that neck brace to remind them of that. So same when I broke my jaw. When mm-hmm. I broke my jaw weeks later, it was still broken. Mm-hmm. So I tape it up every night, reminding the people yeah. my jaw is still broken. So I'm wrestling under you know, extreme circumstance. Wow. And uh, as you said, um, in 1997, you wrestled uh, with Taz. So what is your uh, best moment uh, with him? 
With Taz? Well, yeah. With, uh, with Taz. I told you. My first match with Taz. Yeah. My first match with ECW was my best moment with him. Okay. My best match with him. The one, I, the one that set the pace for the 90s. After I did that, that, that set the pace. Okay, go ahead, my friend. Okay, in 1997, a couple of ECW talents invaded the WWF, uh, now known as WWE Universe. Right. Do you consider this moment as a fake or not? Um, probably or not. I, I didn't like it. it. It shouldn't have happened because uh, I don't know. Things didn't take us serious, and uh, we were doing good on our own without them. Okay, okay. I thought uh, we Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your match in nine. The thing is, hold on. What I like, go ahead. I like making my own thing because I'm more proud of when I make my own thing yeah. than when I'm doing somebody else's thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your match in, in uh, 19, uh, 90, uh, 1998 uh, in It Wait for Us for us is uh, one of, uh, of the greatest matches in ECW history. The match was uh, included a. Um, Uh, you and RVD against Ayabusa and uh, Shinze Sizeki, known as uh, Akushi. Uh, what was your reaction when you uh, when you saw the match after your performance? Uh, I enjoyed it because uh, you know I, uh, uh, Hayabusa, I helped train back in Japan years ago, years before that. Okay, back before he was Hayabusa, he was Izaki, you know, Mr. Izaki. I, I helped him. Uh, breaking the business. So when I got to wrestle him in, in the main event and he waved, you know, it, it was awesome. And, and how good he is. I knew that. I knew how good he was. And that was you know, and I knew how awesome. Good, uh, Shinjaki was. I knew, you know, they were both great. That's why I, I had picked those guys for that match. There was no angle. There was no reason other than a good match. So I picked those guys myself. But and have you prepared them. something uh, before the match or you, you call all on the mat? No, we prepared a little bit. Okay. Like I had Akushi and, and, and uh, I had Busa fly into Michigan, and I drove them to Ohio on my motor. I had a, yeah. a tour bus, and uh, they flew to my house, and I drove them down there. So while we're driving down there, we kind of talked a little bit. And okay. A little bit, and then we, no, yeah, we planned a lot of it, uh, and some of it was caught by ear. But you know, they didn't speak English, so, and we don't speak Japanese. Okay. I I speak Japanese, but not very good. But they don't speak <laughs> any English <laughs> at the time. At the time. Yes, sir. Communicating the ring with him. <laughs> okay. But, but, but uh, if you're a good wrestler, if you get two good wrestlers, you don't have to communicate. You yeah, because uh, the, the, uh, that's in universal uh, languages for uh, every person. When you call a clothesline, that's a clothesline. So. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in Japan, they call it a lariatto. Okay. Lariato, oh, okay. Stan Hansen's clothesline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. In the early. In the early 2000s, ECW was acquired by WWE. What is your opinion about this transaction? Uh, I didn't like it, but, uh, you know, and uh, Paul didn't tell us what was going on back in, you know, when I quit, he didn't tell me he was in works with Vince and had money. He didn't mm -hmm. tell me that. He, you know, he just said, there's no money and, and fuck you, there's no money. You know, I can't pay if there's no money. So I tried to leave and then he, he Uh, stop me. Okay. WCW. Wow. But anyways, uh, it, it's something for the boys all around. Me. Yeah, because uh, not just me. It's something for oh. Hold on one second. I gotta get some coffee. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> No I got it. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. We have a, a blooper here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Well, um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in 2000, ECW was a crisis. The ECW have been transformed by uh, WWE after uh, after this. And uh, honestly, between you and me, uh, that wasn't not the same after Vince McMahon touch. It was a flop. Yeah, it was a flop, honestly. No, no, no. I don't consider the rebirth of ECW as really being ECW. Like uh, Christian Cage, uh, I think his name Christian. Yeah, Christian. He goes, uh, he when he was ECW champion, I laughed because he was never ECW champion. He was a mm -hmm. WWE champion. That makes it it's a bit different. Yeah. You know, and when the, like the like the, uh, Tess and Mike Cox would say ECW, I, I'd laugh because I go, "This is not ECW. This is a joke." 
WWE with three yeah. brothers. Yeah, and uh, he tried to reproduce uh, some uh, older match, such as uh, Musato Tonaka versus Mike Awesome. Uh, One night stand, two thousand and five. Well, yes, but the the match is really good, but not like the first match in no. the ECW arena with the. The, the goddamn ECW extreme fans that that the reaction is not the same and that's very different. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it was different. Even though that the crowds were bigger, a little bigger and better, yeah. they were different fans. Yeah, and we couldn't do what we wanted to do. They knew we were not doing what we were best at. We would hit do a house show and people would chant all night long, break table, break table, Sabu, Sabu, RVD, RVD, all night long. And then when me and Rob come out, we don't break a table. They wouldn't let us. They just they think we're being lazy. <laughs> and it wasn't. We were dying to do it. They wouldn't let us do it. They actually took the tables from ringside away so I couldn't break them. Yes. So, you know, let alone put them under the ring. They, they took them away so I couldn't break them. And I couldn't break them even in my hometown. We wrestled in Michigan and Detroit. And I couldn't break a table. They wouldn't let me. And I begged them. <laughs> I said, please, let me break a table. They wouldn't let me do it. I said, no, that's for somebody else. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, as usual, um, Nostradamus Ben predict uh, your future. <laughs> ben uh, will finish the interview, uh, so uh, go ahead, my friend. Uh, I uh, or uh, we pre predict you uh, a WWE uh, Hall of Fame induction. Why not? And maybe by and your uh, maybe by your yeah, uh, former yeah, partner yeah. RVD. Well, with, with Vince McMahon going to prison, yeah, I would take it. <laughs> because now it's becoming more honorable. Before it wasn't, yeah. now it is, and I need the payoff. So I'll, I'll do it for the payoff. My uncle would tell me, take his money. Don't worry about the fucking honor. <laughs> But I'll take the money. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, and... I'm sorry if I talk bad about that. No, no, no. Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we understood then. I won't do it no more. <laughs> and, and as I said uh, in a couple of uh, pod, uh, episode, uh, and I and I repeat all of this, when you are not, this is a, a politic business. And oh, yeah. if you are not yeah. with the right person and you don't talk with the right person and you don't lick person, That's it. You're exactly right. Yeah, You're yeah, exactly yeah. Right. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sabu, for your time and accepting our invitation for this uh, wonderful ECW uh, wrestling uh, podcast. Uh, this is uh, an honor and privilege. Thank you so much, you my are, friend. You are my favorite wrestler uh, in ECW, the original ECW. Yes. You are my uh, my favorite yes, yes, wrestler. Yes. Says, thank you very much, and so do I. Yes. I don't know if you guys know, but you know, she died about a year ago. Yeah, we June know it. 23rd, and uh, uh, it, it was a big piece of my, a big hole in my life. It is a big hole in my life. For this event. Yes, and when we talk about, uh, we know that uh, that this is uh, from uh, from your bottom of your heart. So, yes, uh, take care, my friend, and uh, I hope that we uh, can shake your hands uh, one time. So, uh, take care and have a good one, my friend. Thank you. Bye bye. Good, goodbye, Mr. Sabu. Cheers. Cheers.